Do remember, NBA fans, All-Star season is upon us. You got to get out. You got to vote early. And often the first returns have come back. And unfortunately for your Toronto Raptors, no Raptor managed to crack the top 10. As we take a look, Giannis leading all Eastern Conference vote getters in the front court and Tyrese Halliburton in the back court. But my question, hopefully a Raptor gets some recognition. Sherm, I'll start with you. Which Raptor has the most compelling case? I think it's two gentlemen that are in the, you know, the real yeah. contenders. Yeah. I would say Scotty. Mm-hmm. Okay. Scotty to me has the most compelling case. I mean, he's been that dude for the Raptors all season long. Yes. And his no- his numbers got really gaudy for a bit. They were those 30 and 12 kind of numbers. They were big numbers. Unfortunately, the Raptors weren't winning the way you'd like them to win. And I'd say as of late, Pascal's making a very, very good argument. He's had a good push over the last, say, two weeks of saying, you know what, I can still do this. So, But Scotty, to me, would be the guy, if you're looking at this team holistically throughout the course of the season to this point, you got to think Scotty would be the Raptor that would have the best chance based on production to get into the all-star game. Josie? So I, I agree with Sherm. I, I think it all comes down to winning, though. I can think back to um, Chris Bosh. Yep. Uh, just before he left Toronto, those years, he had some really good numbers, and he was the guy that everybody was game planning against on the other team. Problem was the team was 10th. And that, and you know, and the Raptors are facing the same thing right now, as as Sherm said. Both Pascal and Scotty. I mean, Scotty's taken such; he's made more three pointers to date, and we're we're, not, we're we just flipped the calendar than he did all of last year. So uh, there is a case for both of them. The issue is winning, and you know, it's not. And the exposure helps too. I mean, let's face it; we we talk about the history of All Star balloting, and those names were just up there. It's a, there's a lot of familiarity that goes into all-star balloting with people and, and the casual fans that get to vote on these days when your vote counts for two and three times the vote. But let's think back to Vince Carter, who led the all-star game in balloting, I believe it was twice. Rightfully so. And he did it from Toronto. Yeah. It's not like he did it from New York or L.A. The team has no, reach. There was no internet voting either. You had to get your butt Speaking to the arena. Speaking of right? internet voting, make so. sure to check out the QR code that's on the screen or go online, NBA.com and all the other places, to make sure you guys get your votes in for the Toronto Raptors, for Pascal Siakam, for Scotty Barnes, who have been absolutely balling. I just scanned that. It took me to Akil's lunch. No, it didn't. No, no it didn't. Menu. No, it didn't. Don't lie. Don't lie. Don't lie. Here we go. Let's talk about the most recent wins for the Toronto Raptors, and they played a Memphis. Grizzly squad who I said don't judge them by their record because this is a different team when John Morant's on the floor but Jonesy the Raptors looked very impressive your take from that matchup you know this was a game that we've seen the Raptor Memphis play the way the Raptors have right you get down you fight back and your margin of error is so slim that late in the game when there's a turnover or a missed shot or there's a foul that you've 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 taken it just it just pushes you back even though you're climbing the hill and you run out of juice it was nice to see so toronto playing yeah. with the lead we always talk about playing with the lead and how important it is and how it expands your margin of error i thought uh, you know they're they're off to terrific starts now with this this new starting unit you can just feel there's a new energy right now you could feel it on on january 1st when they played cleveland and the thing that i like dennis Schroeder, i thought was terrific in helping to close out the game. He's in a role that he's very familiar with. He was with. on there with quickly. They yep. had both point guards. Yep, he, and, and and you got two decision makers, and he, that's a role for Schroeder that he's very familiar with, coming off the bench. And I say this in a, in, a, in a positive way. He's not overexposed. You're not asking him to do all these things for Initiating such a long time. Yeah. the entire offense. And he's out there with Quickly and, and you know, Pascal and, and, and Scotty. And you look at Scotty, unselfish. Telling quickly, no, you got that matchup. You go. I'll get in the corner here. If there's help off the strong side, you pitch it to me. But that's you right now. I, and I just think they're working something out from a chemistry standpoint. Aside from the start, they held on at the finish, and I think there's something there to develop later on. I really liked how they finished quarters. Okay. They were excellent at finishing quarters in that game. I think it was a 10-2 run to finish a quarter to take the lead 
in the dying seconds of the first quarter, but a minute 10 down. Second quarter, I believe it was 12-2, 12, 12, if I'm not yeah, mistaken, yeah, yeah. in the last 303 of that quarter. Third quarter, 15-4 to four run to end the quarter. This is crucial. Sherm's getting his LeBron on well, right now. This is crucial because when you think about the Raptors getting down early, yep. if you have that ability, not in the fourth quarter, but in the first quarter and the second quarter, yeah. you're changing the whole complexion of the game. And to me, it was very evident that no matter what Memphis did in that game, the Raptors could go on a run. We haven't experienced that with the Raptors so far this season. They get down, and they're chasing through four quarters and making it a game late in the game, and usually not able to get over the hump late. First quarter, run. Second quarter, end it with a run. Third quarter, end it with a run. You're controlling the final minutes of the quarters. That's big moving forward. It, Butch Carter, one of the first coaches that really – directed me towards analytics and all these numbers and made my head spin said if you win the first and the third quarter most of the time you're going to win the game and and Doug Collins always used to talk about that in Chicago and Washington wherever it's how you start and finish quarters well it's working out for the Toronto Raptors lastly for me um what'd you like from Porter I got quite a quite a bit of run there and, and fit in quite nicely did you think in uh, defense and the offensive end well? yeah I, I thought that uh, defensively he did a really good job uh, with verticality and protecting the rim um, uh, and offensively he's just like in those limited minutes he was able to to get quick uh, open threes and we know that he's knocked down and really really good three-point shooter so I'm, I'm happy with his minutes over there and uh, we're going to continue giving him opportunity and seeing what we got there uh, road games. How does games like this? How does this one set the tone for the rest? Uh, obviously, it's always better to start the road trip with, with, with a win. Uh, I think it's it's gonna give us a really good opportunity to watch film and to be critical on uh, some things that we need to to improve and get better at. Uh, at the same time, uh, this is a long road trip, 11 days and six games. You know, we're going to have ups and downs, but the most important thing is that for this group right now is staying together and trying to play to a standard. And I, I was telling guys tonight, like, don't play the score. Like, don't look at the scoreboard and see that we're up 18 or 19 or whatever. Like, we, we got to do right things. You know, if we are doing the right things over the course of 48 minutes, then we can live with the outcome. We can live with the result, but we got to play to a standard.